and I was this close to buying a Ferrari 308. So not quite 10 years ago, I was on the verge of buying a Ferrari 308 GTB. At the time, the cars were super cheap. $25,000 is what I was looking to pay for for this 308. It wasn't a perfect car, but it was in good condition for something that you would just drive. And here are three reasons why I didn't buy a Ferrari 308 and bought this Porsche Boxster instead. Reason number one, maintenance costs. Ferrari maintenance gets very expensive very quickly. And the 308 every about 10,000 miles or five years, whichever comes first, it requires an engine out major service. A large reason for this major service is where they put the belts. Because it's a mid-engine car, you have to service belts. You literally have no space, and so the engine has to come out to, to get it. I have heard of some people that have figured out ways to do it without taking the engine out, but in general, people take the engine out. Beyond this, I started asking Ferrari owners who had owned a 308 or similar car, just how much do they pay annually for maintenance? Most on average said it was about $3,000 a year. So $3,000 a year to keep a car on the road was a little steep <laughs> at the time. Some of this is just because of there's Ferrari parts, some because of how much you have to pay in labor if you had someone else do it. Of course, you can do some of this yourself, but especially if you buy it from a Ferrari dealership and your goal is to get another Ferrari at some other time, you need to have them service it. I'll have another video on that. The world of buying Ferraris apparently is quite interesting. Uh, and I had some friends go to a Ferrari dealership and find out quite a bit of information about what it takes to actually buy a Ferrari. It's not just about money. Reason number two, daily driving. My plan for this Ferrari 308 was to drive it every day. It was going to be my commuter car. Now, this car that I was looking at buying had 35,000 miles on it, which is high for a Ferrari. 308, but still not terrible. But I needed a car to commute back and forth from work. I was selling my Porsche 944 that I had at the time and thought, hey, Ferrari uh, seems about right, right? Especially when you think $25,000 and hey, I'm driving a Ferrari. That's on to Civic money if you get a couple options, right? But to daily drive that would have been a mistake. The amount of miles that I would have put on it would have made it if I ever wanted to sell it again. At the time, I thought I would just lose money on the whole deal, which I probably would have because of the going back to the maintenance. Having to do major maintenance every 10,000 miles, that would have happened pretty much every year. On average, I drive my car going to work. I was on the coast at the time, but I was driving about eight to 10,000 miles every day going to work, similar to what I do now. So while not huge amount of mileage yearly, on a Ferrari that you're gonna to have to take the engine out and do five to $10,000 maintenance, every single year would have added up real quick. And here's reason number three, the 80s performance. Zero to 60 in a Ferrari 308, you think of it as a super fast car, you think of images of Magnum PI driving quickly. The zero to 60 time of an early 80s Ferrari 308 GTB is 6.8 seconds. The quoted time by Porsche of this Boxster is 6.7 seconds. Magazines of the time with the Ferrari got 6.5 to 6.8 seconds, right around there, what you, what you would expect. Motor Trend, Road and Track, these magazines tried out the Boxster, this same generation, early Boxster, when it came out, and were able to manage six seconds flat. Now, I don't know if the transmission was broken at the end of that, but multiple magazines were able to make the early Boxster get from zero to 60 in six seconds flat. Driving at legal speeds, getting onto the freeway and stuff, that's pretty much the acceleration that matters. You're not able to do top speed runs and the Boxster gets out almost 150 miles an hour, 149, which is more than enough to get yourself in trouble. Beyond that, reading about other owners' experience and a lot of times the 308, the smell of gas fumes in the cabin is an experience. I mean, it's an 80s car, so you gotta, and some late 70s. So you gotta expect that kind of thing. It's just different era. 
Although that gated shifter, uh, that, that would be nice. Doesn't get much cooler than that. So the Ferrari 308, GTB, GTS, they're beautiful cars. And at times I do kick myself for not buying one of these $25,000 examples when they're pretty reasonable. More recently, similar good driving type examples, they're getting around $90,000. The market for the 308 has skyrocketed. So had I not been looking to daily drive this car, had it been something where I had an extra space in my garage, an occasional weekend around town, park it, hardly put any miles on it, kept maintenance costs down, would have been an incredible investment. That goes to the philosophies of the company, Ferrari and Porsche. Ferrari thinks of their cars more as art something to be enjoyed but often just to look at it's not always enjoying the driving experience in a ferrari it's an experience when you buy one and it's an experience when you have it in your garage it's an experience when you drive it it's got a sense of occasion you don't turn heads in a ferrari porsche on the other hand has the idea hey we're going to give you very close performance to a Ferrari, depending on how high up you get. If you get a 911 turbo or something, you're, you're right at Ferrari performance. But we're gonna do it at a lower price point without all the pretension that comes with buying a Ferrari. And we're gonna make that car able to drive every single day. And that's the big difference. A Porsche, maintenance is expensive, yes but it's not Ferrari expensive. And it doesn't need extremely, extremely labor intensive work every year. So that's the reason why I bought a Porsche Boxster over a Ferrari 308, but it's pretty close to buying a 308 for a while. Sometimes I wish I had, mainly so I could resell it now for quite a bit of money. So what do you think? Get down in the comments, let me know, would you have bought a Ferrari 308? instead of a Porsche Boxster. Now mind you, as a daily driver, so you gotta live with it every day and pay the maintenance costs. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't like it, uh, yeah, that thumbs down button's broken, so don't even try to click it. Make sure to share this video with anyone that likes Ferraris or Porsches so they can get an idea of the decisions between buying the two, even if they don't have one. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, and when we do, we're going to be giving away merchandise. Everyone that subscribes or shares our video helps us get a little closer to that goal so we can start giving some merch away. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.